Hello again. It's retired Pastor Naomi Barkanik from Spirit of Joy Lutheran Church in Clarkdale, Arizona. I'm back today in my clergy shirt and my collar. But it was fun with that silly t-shirt I wore and that hat last time I spoke with you when we talked about the Holy Hilarity Sunday that many churches celebrate on the Sunday after Easter. And maybe we can talk Pastor Sharon into doing that next year when we're all together again. And then we can laugh and really be silly. But today I want to be more serious. You know, this, pande this pandemic has been with us now for more than two months. And it's kind of come up more than once in some conversations with people. Naomi, do you think God is punishing the world for this by sending this pandemic? My answer off the cuff, cuff is certainly not. God does not punish. God is a God of love. God cries with us in this pandemic. But God did not cause this pandemic. Well then, what's more to say? A lot. And I've been cleaning my office. I found an article. It was in the, well now it's called the Living Lutheran but when this article was written in August of 2012, it was called The Lutheran Magazine. And it was written by Susan L. Barreto, who is, or maybe is no longer, but she was then a member of Luther Memorial Church in Chicago, Illinois. It's called Debunking the Disaster Myths. A theologian explores the nature of God's power in disasters. Debunking disaster myths. Many people say this was a direct punishment from God. And I say no. Now this article is is. This author, Susan Barreto, is talking to the professor of Old Testament at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, Dr. Terry Fretheim. I'm sure by now he's retired. But he bases this article on the book of Job. So I want to start by talking a little bit about the book of Job so you'll be able to, to understand why he writes as he does. I'm looking at our Lutheran Bible and I'm looking at the book of Job. Let me read you some of the background of this book so you will get an understanding of what the, this book is all about. And if after this little short survey you still want to do more, I did a whole series on Job four weeks, I believe, just this last spring. And if any of you are interested, just give me a call and I'll give you a copy of that series. It opened my eyes and, and the people in the class. You know, Job, Job was a complainer. You know, we, we talk about the patience of Job. Well, he really wasn't patient. But anyway, let me read to you here what the Lutheran Bible says. This is the background before the book actually starts. The author of the book of Job is unknown. He was likely a Jew writing to other Jews because he quotes from other biblical books and refers to God as Yahweh. Yahweh is the divine name revealed to Israel and written in English as, written in English as Lord. The date of the book's composition is, de is debated, but most scholars place it in the Babylonian exile which would be about the 6th century BCE. That was the worst time 
when the children of Israel were captives in Babylon. And they had a lot of time on their hands. So now what's the story? The book of Job is a story of a good, innocent man who suffers terrible loss. Everything he has is destroyed. His wealth, his beloved children, and his health. Three friends come to comfort him and offer reasons for Job's misfortunes. But Job will have none of it. He protests his innocence. He yells. He dares God to answer him. At the end of the book, God does indeed answer him with a vision of creation in all its glory. The book of Job should not be read as history. Rather, it should be read as a meditation on the problem of undeserved suffering. It explores questions such as, why do the innocent suffer? Where is God in my suffering? How come millions of people have died because of this COVID-19? What kind of world is this? These questions are as old as the Bible and as new as today's newspaper or as tonight's news. What's the message? Job is a complicated book because it addresses very difficult... It, excuse me. Job is a complicated book because it addresses a very difficult question. Why do the innocent suffer? Perhaps the author of Job knew there was no final answer to that question, and that's why he incorporates so many different voices in his story. Even God does not answer the question directly. Instead, God speaks about creation. The book of Job does claim certain things about suffering, about God, and about the world. Suffering is not always the result of sin. There was widespread belief in the ancient world that suffering was punishment for sin. The friends of Job told, the friends of Job hold this belief, repeatedly accusing Job of sin and calling him, calling for him to repent. Job maintains his innocence. His suffering is not the result of sin and his friend's accusations only add to his suffering. And Job complains over and over again. But, in the Bible, that complaining was called a lament. It was like a prayer, but included all kinds of complaining. which they say is the proper response to suffering. The book of Job teaches its readers about the power of prayer. Job is the only human being in the book who speaks to God directly. His friends talk about God, but they never speak to God. In the end, Job is commended for speaking to God directly. But Job's speaking most often takes the form of lament, an honest cry of anger and anguish to God. And God welcomes that. God hears that. And for 40, 48 verses, Job is, um, Job is lamenting. He lets it all hang out, which is something that we need to learn. We need not be stoic. When we suffer, we can go directly to God and be angry and cry out to God. He can handle it. A lament, an honest cry of anger and anguish to God. The Old Testament claims that lament is a faithful response to suffering. We also learn from the book of Job that God cares for the good creation God has made and takes delight in it. At the end of the book, God takes Job on a grand tour of the cosmos. God does not speak of Job's suffering, 
but instead takes Job's focus off of himself and helps him see the world around him. The world, as God describes it, is good, is a good, ordered creation, but it is also given a certain freedom. God takes delight in the wildest of creatures, the sea, the wild animals, the Leviathan. God cares for them as God also cares for Job. In the face of his suffering, Job is invited to see and delight in the world God has created, even amidst his suffering. Job is invited to live in it with the same freedom God gives all creatures, including you and me. In spite of his great suffering, Job accepts that invitation. The book of Job is a profound meditation on the mystery of suffering. It invites new questions and new interpretations from every generation of readers. Most importantly, it invites its readers into an encounter with God, the God of life who created and sustains the world in love and who, through the cross of Christ, enters fully into the suffering of that world and redeems it. God is with us in this pandemic. God did not bring this pandemic upon the world as punishment. God created nature with the same freedom that God created you and me. God created humans. No invisible strings on our heads to act only God's ways. We are free to live up to our potential. We have been granted the gift of free will, and God also granted that same gift of free will to nature. So I believe that we are hurting in this time of COVID-19. And it's okay. It's okay to pray to God. It's okay to lament. Lament or complain. Do it to God. Don't be stoic. Talk to God. God, when is this going to be over? It's okay. Don't talk to God because you're angry at God. Talk to God because you're angry because this isn't the best of situations. And when I see you next time, now that we learn more about what the book of Job is, we can relate to this article so much better. Where again we'll find out that God gave freedom not only to you and me, but also to creation itself. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.